The practice of medicine is much more than simply acquiring skills and learning how to use them. Plain and simple, it's a calling to serve humanity. We've each answered that call in our own way and dedicated ourselves to serve. But for some of us, that call to service has taken us out of the clinic or hospital and into a wider arena where the complaints are more complicated, the treatments are more difficult to find, and the cures change every day. Today, we honor five members of the family of medicine who have accepted that challenge and serve us and our patients in Austin and Washington as members of the Texas Legislature and U.S. Congress. Dr. Michael Burgess, Dr. John Zerwas, Dr. Bob Duell, Mrs. Susan King, and Dr. Mark Shelton. These are our champions of the Texas Family of Medicine. You know, if you haven't done it before, it's, it's hard to describe to someone what it's like. They do consider my opinion important, and it's fun in a hearing to know that you're one of the few people perhaps on the dais that understands exactly what they're talking about. And this really came to me about three years ago. We were working on an FDA bill reauthorizing the FDA, and I looked around the committee and realized there's only one person in this room that's ever picked up a prescription, a pen, and, and written a prescription, looked a patient in the eye, counseled risk, benefits, costs, and turned it off and handed it to them and said, go get this filled. I was it. So it, it was an enormous responsibility that I felt, because I was the only one that had ever been engaged in that type of activity, I had to be darn sure that we got it right. All of the senators and, and uh, most of the House members just look at me as a resource as to tell them how it is in the trenches, so to speak, practicing uh, medicine. I, I think it's a good thing that I do still practice medicine. and. Uh, even uh, legislators that might disagree with me on how to approach an issue, uh, they want to know, you know, and they trust me to tell them this is what it's like practicing medicine. Even though we have a lot of clinical experience, we have a lot of interaction in the whole administration of health care. And the body as a whole is, is looking for a great deal of, of guidance in that regard. Being a physician, you have to uh, listen to other people, and it's really important because in the legislature, you have to listen to colleagues, you have to listen to constituents. Uh, you also have to be pragmatic as a physician. You have to come up with a treatment plan that patients can um, adhere to, and that's important in making laws as well. They're looking for somebody uh, less about their experience in the legislature, more about their experience out there in the healthcare arena to help them get to the right place. And you have to get along with other folks because to pass anything in the Texas House, you have to have 75 friends. I try to give them the, just the, per, the perspective of how it is to take care of patients, which is really what this is all about. People ask me, what do I call you, doctor or senator? I say, well, my name's Bob. I've been very fortunate to be with organizations that have understood and respected the value of physicians and health care providers working in the legislature. And so I've had people that said, you know, John Zarwas, these are the things that we would really like for you to do. We'd like for you in some leadership roles, some administrative roles. And yes, you know, we understand your desire to stay clinically active, which is, I think, a very, very important thing that, that we all need to recognize as, as leaders, uh, is to stay clinically active. But, but to really focus on those things and then serve your time in the legislature and do the things that you need to do there. So, so there has been a dramatic change in that regard. Being in the legislature has probably changed my relationship with the Tarrant County Medical community somewhat. Um, I've gotten to know a lot more of the physicians and their families, and also um, um, they have a different set of questions and things they want to talk about when, when we see each other at uh, meetings. With, with the, the, the doctors here at home, um, <laughs> there's of course no uh, 
no scarcity of criticism if they feel that it needs to be applied. Uh, we're all pretty familiar with each other, and uh, there's no one was shy in that group meeting about uh, pointing out the shortcomings of whether it be the shortcomings of my representation or the shortcomings of my sides, my party's representation, or just the shortcomings of Congress in general. I mean, as you know, the, the, the doctors in the Denton County Medical Society tend to be relatively outspoken, and uh, certainly no one, there were no shrinking violets in the room this week when we had our meeting. You go back and you realize that you're really not that important. You're nothing but a voice and, and a passageway for other people's voices. You have to listen, you have to pay attention, you have to work hard and get results. You can't just go up and say, oh my goodness, I'm the state rep, because no one cares. Because basically my relationship with my peers uh, here at Primary Care Associates is the same. Uh, they're very gracious about covering when, uh, when I'm gone and the consultants that I use. Uh, a lot of times I call uh, consultants in Dallas and they don't even know I'm a senator or occasionally someone will say are you related to the senator and I'll say yeah, very much so I'm him but uh, you know I, uh, it's amazing that some people don't know that I'm a senator and that's fine with me. I've really enjoyed being collegial with them I've always felt that way ever since I worked in the medical center in Houston and had a very close relationship with uh, of all dreaded things cardiovascular surgeons so uh, it's not new to me to be working with physicians but uh, I think uh, the level of respect and Collegiality and discussion is, has increased, certainly. I don't want to come down here and try to sell my doctors on what Washington thought was the way to practice medicine. I want to go back and sell Washington on what my doctors said is what we should be doing as far as health care policy change. Buckle your seatbelt, it's going to be a bumpy ride. And no one knows. No one really knows at this point what's over the horizon. I think the Texas Medical Association um, should understand that the next session is going to be a very difficult session and it's going to be dominated by three issues. The first issue is going to be the budget. As everyone knows, state revenues are decreased. Uh, the second issue is redistricting, uh, which um, turns out to be very complicated with lots of lawyers involved. And the third issue is going to be how Texas deals with the federal health legislation that just passed. We have all the, uh, the issues of federal overreach and nullification and going to court and all these things that we have no idea how those will pan out. And so it's kind of almost premature to say what will happen if we have a, a strong sense of removing Texas from that mix. You know, we have some, some opportunities now to, to, to pull back some parts of the bill or to try to restructure some parts of the bill. There may be an opportunity to pull the whole thing back if the Supreme Court agrees, so we'll just, we'll just have to see. We deal with thousands of bills. Last session, uh, over 12,000 bills were filed, and yes, we have to do a budget. Yes, there's going to be uh, a shortfall, but uh, we work really hard in those 140 days, and we will address those issues, and I don't think anything really gets put on the back burner. I think the key is, is for physicians and for organized medicine as a whole to uh, be sure that their priorities are, are well established uh, so that the legislators understand what are the most important things that we as legislators need to know with regard to the practice of medicine and the delivery of health care services because we're going to have to prioritize those things. Do not assume that because there's a physician in the Senate and two physicians, maybe three now in the House of Representatives, that everything's going to be taken care of. There is strength in numbers. Uh, what's going to go on, that the health care dollars are precious, we don't have enough dollars to do everything that we uh, need to do, uh, there are patient access issues that we need to address, there are, pay are physician reimbursement issues that we need to address, and the more of my colleagues that are there on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis during the session, the easier it is for me to reinforce what I try to get across into the Texas Senate. Keep up the good work. Keep a smile on your lips and a song in your heart. This too will pass. Representative Michael Burgess. Representative John Zerwas. Senator Bob Jewell. Representative Susan King. Representative Mark Shelton. Our champions of the family of medicine in Texas. Five men and women who have done more than just talk about the problems facing our patients and our profession. They've stepped up and are working for real solutions. Interestingly, I learned the other day that there are 50 doctors who are running for Congress right now. It just underscores how, how engaged 
the medical community is now as opposed to say even the 10 years ago when, when I decided to run. Today we salute our five champions and take comfort in the fact that our numbers are growing.